Today we're gonna go over some new Blender add-ons from a bunch of popular Blender developers and other add-ons from new devs that look promising from modeling, rigging, animation, lighting and more. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with Simple Bend X, which is basically a smarter version of the original Simple Bend tool. It lets you bend parts of the mesh and it can do that quickly. We don't need it to align or set up anything ahead of time. You just select the area, run the tool, and adjust the angle and settings like direction and size. From the bottom left corner, it handles mesh orientation automatically. So even if your object's rotated or angled weirdly, it usually figures out the correct bend axis on its own. And if it doesn't, you can force it to use the global X, Y, or Z. Compared to the original, it also gives you more control. You can twist the bending area, shift the bend position along the axis, and even tweak the vertical offset if you need to. It works well on pipes, cables, or anything that is not aligned to the workspace. Next up, we have Simply Tear from the developers of Simply Cloth. This one actually lets you tear cloth in Blender, and you can do that fast with a lot of control. It works with cloth simulation. So once you've drawn your tear lines and hit play, you actually get to see the mesh rip apart dynamically in the animation. And you can tweak things like shrink, gravity, and stiffness to get the behavior that you want. It also comes with three different tearing methods, projection, imbalance, and localized. Each one gives you a different look. Projection is quick and clean. Imbalance preserves topology, and it can do this better, especially for game-ready meshes. And localized creates more broken, scattered results. If you don't want to dig into all that, there are also presets like rough, regular, and sharp that apply everything for you. And if you want to push things further, you can just keep drawing more tears, small ones, full cuts, or total destruction. Let's talk about Preselect, made by Blender Guppy, the same developer behind Random Flow. Random Flow is a modeling tool for generating randomized sci fi details on hard surface meshes. And Preselect, on the other hand, is meant as a support for the random flow. It helps you select specific groups of faces without manually clicking around, using direction, connectivity, or the shape of the geometry to decide what to grab. You just hover over the mesh in either object or the edit mode and trigger the selection using the different hotkeys. There's also an overlay that shows what I selected, blue for selected faces and red for the deselected. In addition, X-ray toggle is available, unless you see the overlay through the mesh when needed. And while it is built for random flow, you can easily use it for other tasks, like isolating panels, prepping for extrusion, or deleting face islands. Next we have Global HDRI, which is an HDRI lighting toolkit for Blender which is actually designed to take the guesswork out of environment lighting. It comes packed with over 500 HDRIs, organized into indoor, outdoor, studio, fantasy, and sci-fi categories with high resolution. It starts with a simple drag and drop setup. You drop in HDRI and the add-on gives you direct control over things like light length, sun angle, gamma, and color tweaks without having to dig into the shader editor. There's also Dome Projection, which traps your HDRI into a visible environment with a floor and walls, which is great for reflections or depth. Beyond lighting tweaks, you can actually batch your favorite go-to HDRIs, adjust the background separately from the light, and organize everything into dynamic folders that sync with your library. Next we have Light Cuts, which is useful for shot-based lighting in Blender. It links each camera to its own collection, so anything inside that collection, like lights, objects, or whatever, is only visible to that specific camera. This means you can design lighting and compositions for each shot independently, without touching keyframes or visibility toggles. Once it is enabled, it can work in real time. You switch cameras, and Blender automatically shows you only lights and objects tied to that view. Collections get created the moment you duplicate or rename a camera and you can drag and drop new elements into them at any point. If you want a rim light or just one angle, you can drop it in that camera's collection and it won't show up in the others. 
You could even use timeline markers to control which camera is active and when, and it updates the viewport, lights, and visibility. And if you need to render without the add-on, there is a big option that locks everything within the keyframes. Next up, we have ShapeKey Pro, which is an add-on designed to speed up and organize ShapeKey workflows. It is packed with features that make managing and editing ShapeKeys less tedious. You can reorder ShapeKeys easily and quickly jump into sculpt mode on a selected ShapeKey, which is really interesting, and preview or isolate them with more control compared to Blender's default solo ShapeKey. It also has smart mirroring options that use vertex positions and connectivity for better accuracy compared to Blender's built-in mirror. In addition to batch mirroring to save time, especially on complex shapes. You can group related shape keys with color coding, filter them by different criteria, and even generate thumbnails for a quick visual reference. The add-on also shines in transferring shape keys between objects, offering multiple methods to handle different match setups, from identical topology to totally different shapes. You can also amplify and normalize controls to help you tweak the intensity of shape key effects. Next, we have BMixer, which is an add-on that simplifies how you build PBR shaders in Blender. Instead of working inside the shader editor, BMixer shifts everything to the side panel and treats materials like stackable layers, each one with its own base color, roughness, normals, metallic, ambient occlusion, displacement, and emission maps. You can actually rename layers, change their order, toggle visibility, and blend between them easily. It uses triplanar projection, so you won't need UVs, and you can switch between a faster, simpler mode or smoother advanced projection, depending on the level of detail that you need. Each layer comes with individual transform controls, like scale, rotation, and position, and you can choose between local and world normals. There are anti-tiling features too, like Voronoi rotation, blend noise, and color variation. For more control, there is a brush mode, which lets you paint masks directly on the model. It automatically sets up a UV map behind the scenes. You also get procedural noise masks, mirror displacement settings, layer alpha control, and a sync toggle for manual or automatic updates. Baking works, but it still feels a bit slow, and selective blending could use more refinement. And with the latest update of the add-on, it introduces the new library feature that will load textures by pointing out their location. On the other hand, Nova Arc adds a live measurement overlay to Blender's viewport. From what I can see, it can be useful for modeling workflows, where diameter and segment counts actually matter. Once it is installed, you will find it in the sign panel under its own tab. From there, you can toggle the whole system on and off globally. To use it, just select two vertices, or an edge, and it instantly shows the distance and the recommended segment count for that span. There is also a 3D guide that you can enable, which draws a line in space between your selection, with optimal labels for measurements. It updates in real time, and works even as you scale or tweak geometry. There are three display modes. One shows just the ideal segment count, one compares your current mesh against a suggested range, and one that gives you the full range from minimum to optimal. You can fully customize the visuals too, like fonts, colors, line styles, and even how often the overlays updates. And if you're working in different pipelines, you can switch between raw presets for different unit systems or studio standards. Now we're gonna talk about Pegasus Spring Bone, which adds real-time spring bones to Blender rigs for things like hair, cloth, tails, or wings. So instead of setting up complex physics or keyframing, you can use its spring system which is inspired by how VRAM models handle springs in Unity and Unreal, and it was originally built to support a motion capture library. Once you have selected the bones, enabling the spring mode makes them respond instantly to rig movements. You can adjust how snappy or loose the motion feels using settings like bounciness, speed, gravity, and spring influence. There is also an interactive mode that lets you pose the rig and see the motion live to avoid scrubbing the timeline. As for bait keyframes, animation mode makes the springs follow the timeline automatically. For the rotation mode, it switches the behavior 
from location to angles, which works better for stuff like hair strands. There is also a built-in collider support too, in addition to a refresh and cleanup button, to quickly reset or disable the system when needed. I would also like to mention or note that the dev is also working on a major update, which is going to improve the capabilities with more complex rigs, and it will bring the system ever closer to how Spring Bones behave in Unity and Unreal. It is being developed alongside a motion capture toolkit, which includes a full set of reusable animations. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about Exploded View Armature Pro. This add-on is built specifically for building exploded views of bones in an armature. Most exploded view tools in Blender only work with objects or meshes, but this one is different. It is made for rigs. You can separate bones along the X, Y, or Z axes, either all at once or just the ones that you have selected in pose mode. The sliders actually give you precise control and everything updates live in the viewport. If you want to go back, there is a reset button that returns the armature to its original pose. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.